If you want to get a remote developer job, you must adhere to a few key principles that will help you massively with going from zero, from knowing nothing about programming, all the way to become a hero. I have observed over the past few years since I've been teaching people programming a few key principles and I want to break them down to you in this video so you know exactly what to expect in your learning journey because honestly this is not gonna be easy okay this is not for the faint of heart especially right now with the layoffs and whatnot and the economical crisis things are becoming fairly difficult this is a weird season that we are in but it's definitely not impossible and things will pick up again maybe you know during june july august during the summer and then you know things will become back to normal because programming is here to stay it's not like we are going back iron age and whatnot if that's gonna happen then we have other things to worry than jobs okay so i'm gonna lay down to you today the four key principles that you need to adhere to if you want to become a remote developer in 2023 and beyond the first thing is to set a goal and define exactly the skills that you need to get to be worthy of the goal. I'm not gonna tell you to go ahead and learn JavaScript, React and all that stuff because you already know that. But I'm gonna give you a different perspective on how to get the skills. The first thing that you need to do is to understand what kind of companies you will be working for. In the biggest majority of cases, you'll be working for SaaS companies. SaaS means software as a service. So usually a SaaS is some type of application that a business is gonna subscribe to in order to manage their team, save money, make money, get leads, save time, etc., etc. So you can start by creating a new Google account and you can type something like how to get more leads for my business, how to manage my team. And then you'll start to get ads and you'll start to see all these companies that are advertising. And then let's say, you come across monday.com. That's one software that's being used by a bunch of companies to manage their projects. And then you can type stuff like, what is the competitor of monday.com or monday.com versus this other thing. And then you'll start to get options and you will start to see what's out there. Once you figure out exactly like what companies you will be working for, then you can research what kind of tech stack they have, how that app actually looks like because you can sign up for free trials and whatnot and then you can start to observe what a front-end developer does because if you are like me and you come from a, like a non-programming background then the only app that you are thinking about is you know facebook instagram youtube twitter right these are the things that you consider apps but there are so many other companies out there that are hiring that are thriving those companies need developers and if you understand like what is on the market, you can create yourself to fit in the market, if that makes sense. So then you start doing some research on LinkedIn, for example, you can go to the job section and then you can see like what people are looking for, what kind of tech skills are people looking for? And then what kind of soft skills people are looking for? Again, you'll see things like React, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, AWS, Docker, things of that nature. So that should be on your, you know, bucket list of technologies, but there are also things like being a team player, knowing how to work with Git, knowing Agile, knowing Scrum, knowing all these things. So I would highly encourage you to do your research and see what those things are and how you can implement them in your learning process. The next thing that I wanna mention is to think long-term and be patient, but be impatient in your actions. Everyone wants to become a developer in like three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, in the fastest, time frame possible and I understand it. We are all humans, we want the thing right now. If you go and buy an iPhone, you're gonna get the iPhone in the next second, right? You open it and you think your life is gonna be changed and then after two days, your dopamine has been released and now you're back to normal. When you learn a skill, you invest a lot of time into it and then at some point in time, and it's not guaranteed that you might get the result. So you need to understand this and you need to respect this and you need to be prepared to put a lot of months of work in and you have to be very consistent. But with that being said, being consistent and being patient is one thing, it's a virtue, right? But you also have to be impatient in your actions every day. So you cannot treat learning programming like a side hustle, you know, like if you have like three jobs or something like that or if you have your main job and then you 
watch Netflix at home and then you do some programming and then you do some, you know, gaming and stuff like that, you won't get that far. You need to understand like, hey, is this the thing that you want to do for the next five to 10 years? If yes, then be prepared to sacrifice every single, you know, time wasting activity that you might have and to invest everything into learning the skill and doing as much as possible every single day. What I recommend people is to aim for like 14 hours a week, which is extremely doable, like two hours per week, per day, sorry. That means like 14 to 15 hours per week. Anyone has two hours. And if you don't have two hours, that means this is not a priority for you. And you might as well give up because there is some other dude out there that's gonna put three, four, five, six hours every single day is gonna take your place. But with two hours per week, so sorry, with two hours per day, you'll be able to actually make something meaningful happen in a relatively short period of time. And there are so many variables that come into this, like for example, your age, if you are married or not, if you have kids or not, how stressed you are, how much sleep do you have every night? How well do you eat? How much do you exercise? Have you ever learned anything difficult before? Have you ever accomplished a goal before, right? So there are so many variables that come into play when it comes to like learning a skill and being, you know, prosperous and being able to monetize that skill that putting that hard stop at three months or six months or nine months or 12 months is gonna be very, very difficult. Of course, if I work with an 18 year old that's super excited about programming, yeah, that transformation is gonna take three months max. But if I work with someone that's like 40 or 50, it's gonna take six, nine, 12 months, maybe even tw two years, right? So the time variable is not as important, but the other variables are what are going to create this equation, which is gonna help you become a developer. The next thing is that you need to learn how to deal with emotions and feelings. And I'm not just talking about that feeling of motivation when you feel motivated and you have to be disciplined to do the work when you don't feel motivated. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that feeling where you are being put in your place, where you think you are the shit, and in reality you aren't. And then you'll be rejected by recruiters, by hiring managers, and you think everyone is against you and you know people should just give you a chance and whatnot. Probably you have this thing in, in your mind, you feel like you are such a good worker that you, you are gonna be an asset to these people and these companies are so evil and they, don't, they just don't wanna give you a chance for you. In reality, that you need to understand that you are not that good. You are not really bringing that much to the table as a junior developer. Like, no matter how good you are, you are not that important. Otherwise, everyone would be hiring juniors because, you know, every senior developer out there was at some point junior and someone gave that guy or that girl a chance to become a senior, right? Makes sense. Because no one was born, you know, like programming from their mom's belly. But for some reason, those senior developers who were once you know juniors they don't want to pay it back pay it forward or however it's called they don't want to do that why because the things that they are doing the, the work they are doing it's extremely complicated and they want another mid or senior dev to come in and do the work so you need to understand that and you cannot leave your feelings and emotions lead you okay this is a big thing and then it makes me go into the next point which is look into the mirror I had the other day a guy on my consultation call and he said, Oh, you know, I'm so much better than the people that you're making fun of when you make the code reviews or like the, the portfolio reviews. And I'm like, really, bro? It's, I was about to say that you are the same as them. So, you know, we are always looking at other people and we can judge other people. And it's very easy, right? You can look at someone's portfolio and you can say, yeah, that's shit, you know. But then you have the same portfolio, you don't even realize it. You are very biased because you know you've put all that work into you know, your portfolio, your applications and everything. You know how much you suffered to get there. And of course, that's your baby. But your baby, okay, it's not up to the standards. It's up to your standards. And your standards are very low because you do not have any like measurement with the reality. So if you can, put yourself in front of the proverbial mirror and really get some accurate feedback on what you're doing. Because you might be working extremely hard and putting in a lot of hours and sweat and you know, cutting off all your friends to be disciplined to make this happen, but you are completely working on the wrong thing in the wrong way, right? It's like, you know, you are trying to go from 
London to Paris, or like, let's say, Paris to Amsterdam, because it's in the, on the continent, but instead of going like from Paris upwards to Amsterdam, you're going to the east, right? And you end up in China. You're still working hard and nobody's gonna say that you're not working hard, but you are going into the right direction. So if you can, if you have someone to tell you, like, uh, like some other developer, ideally, that is willing to hurt your feelings or some sort of recruiter that is willing to hurt your feelings and tell you exactly what they think about your work, you'll be absolutely blessed. Stay away from people that are just pampering you and tell you how great you are and just keep going and you'll slay it. Just keep going, it's, a, it's, it's good advice. I'm not gonna deny it, okay? It's just keep going. But you have to go into the right direction, otherwise you'll be having a very, very difficult time making this transition. And I'm telling you this like your brother, okay? I do sell this stuff, I do sell coaching and mentorship, but it's, it's one of those things not many will implement, okay? Not many will really have some sort of introspection and look at their work. It's very important because we all have that friend, you know, that thinks it's a good singer, right? We all have that friend that thinks it's a good singer and you hear that friend and you're like, bro, just shut up. And it keeps singing, it keeps singing over and over and over. So don't be that friend, don't be that guy and you'll be crushing it. Anyway, see you in the next one, bye-bye.